properly introduce anyways. Um, so, as you know, this semester we're hosting a workshop series, or maybe you don't know, this semester we're hosting a workshop series on digital humanities tools and approaches, all led by the very talented graduate students of our MA in Digital Humanities programs. So topics of the semester will include Omeka, um, XML tra transformations of TEI with JavaScript and XSLT, um, and open access. So I'll plug that event, which will be two weeks from now, February 24th at the same time, 2 to 3.30. Um, the topic will be introduction to Creative Commons and open access with our very own Anna Kroon. And information about that will be shared shortly on our website and via our listserv. Um, so note that this workshop is being recorded and it will be archived on our YouTube page. But I am very pleased to introduce our first workshop host today. So Regina Hong is a second year MA in Digital Humanities candidate and a sesquicentennial scholar at the Women in Leadership Archives at Loyola. Her research interests lie in migration and urban history. She is the co-author of Postcard Impressions of Early 20th Century Singapore, Perspectives from the Japanese Community, a book examining the history of the pre-war Singapore community through postcards. So I will turn it over to Regina to kind of walk us through um, narrating time using Timeline JS. Thank you, Dr. Hotwood. Hi, everyone. It's really nice to see all of you on this um, wintry day. I hope we are all keeping warm. So just before I start screen sharing, I'm going to plonk a link in the chat so that um, you can download a handout if you find that it's easier for you to follow along with that. The slides are also up there, so um, you can have access to it as I go through this thing. So I'm going to start screen sharing now. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay, so um, just to check, is everyone able to see this? Good, okay, awesome. All right, so today's agenda, generally speaking, it's an hour and 30 minute workshop. And in that, in the time that we have together, I'm going to briefly walk us through what Timeline JS is, and we'll look at the project example together, and then we'll get into the fun stuff we'll design a timeline JS project for ourselves. And then as part of good practices in the digital humanities, we'll also be reflecting on that building process. And finally, just to zoom out a little bit, we'll think about what kind of digital project timeline JS is and how looking at timeline JS in that manner can help us analyze similar digital humanities projects. So our learning objectives, um, I'm not going to read them all out. You can see them in the handout as well. Um, though I think probably the most fun part for all of us would be the design, creation and reflection process. So I'm really looking forward to what timelines people come up with. So with that being said, with all that hype, what's Timeline JS? Simply put, it's an open source tool for building timelines. So it's created by the Knight Lab at Northwestern University. And Timeline JS is part of a suite of tools that they have. And if you are interested, you can check out um, the Knight Lab's website more for various other tools you might want to consider using. And what Timeline JS does is that it allows a variety of media to be displayed with explanatory text. So media such as tweets, videos, images, audio can all be incorporated into the timeline and you can write some text explaining what the event is about or what the media is about. And finally, what makes Timeline JS a really nice and accessible tool is that it uses a Google spreadsheet to read information. Um, specifically, it uses the programming language JSON. I don't know too much about JSON, unfortunately. But if you know more about JSON, you can actually customize Timeline JS to suit your own needs. So some examples of Timeline JS projects can be seen on the site, and uh, I have a screenshot of it here. So it has been used 
by news journals to illustrate um, certain people's lives. It has been used to illustrate an event. And for my own job as a sesquicentennial scholar at the Women and Leadership Archives, we are using Timeline JS to showcase events in student life that happened at Loyola over a decade. So there are many ways in which you can use Timeline JS, and it's a very nice and versatile tool. Okay, so with that, so let's get started with setting up a Google spreadsheet template for Timeline JS. So let me exit this briefly so I can give you all the link. Okay, so I put the link in the chat. I'll just wait for everyone to get there. Once you have gotten into the site, could you just flash me a thumbs up? Good, thank you. Okay, so now um, we are on the site here. So we'll scroll through all those nice images at the top first and go to step one, get the spreadsheet template. So what I'd like um, everyone to do is to click on that blue button. And when it does, a new tab should open up and you will see something like this. So if you have gotten there, could you just um, flash me a thumbs up? Cool. Okay, so there's a lot of information here. Don't worry, I'll explain what all these columns mean, what kind of data we are supposed to put in that yet, uh, in that later. But for now, let's make this timeline JS template publishable to the web so it can be seen by other people. So first go to file. Okay, you can click on file. And then after that, you will see this line of text called publish to the web. Click on that. And then you see this little pop up here. Under this drop down menu, select OD1. Okay. And after that, click the publish button. You'll see another pop up saying, are you sure you want to publish this selection? Just click OK. okay. And we can close this pop up for now. Okay, so magic will start occurring later, but before, oh, I see a chat message. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, have you looked at there's no publish to the web in the file dropdown at all. Oh, alas. Do you want to try switching to another browser? Mine works on Chrome, but um, <laughs> it, um, you can try Safari if you're on a Mac. I'm not sure if it works on Explorer or Firefox. Yeah, these kinds of interesting things happen. <laughs> oh, Katrina, are you okay? <laughs> Yeah, take, take your time, don't worry. Um, yeah, I've had the same website load differently for me on different browsers, so it's a constant struggle. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, um, Catherine, if you run into issues, um, just let me know later because we'll have sufficient time <laughs> to figure these things out. So I'm just going to go ahead first um, and whoop, let's see. Okay, so for those of you, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show us the project example that TimelineJS has. I'm going to explain how you can get this effect on your own Excel worksheet. So you might want to keep the Excel template open and I'll explain to you what goes into each column. So in this example here, we have a very nice title slide. And title slides are different from the ones that come after. So just very briefly, these are 
what we are, what I'll call normal slides. This is a title slide, right? The image is bigger. You have the text superimposed on that. And how you can create that same effect is if you scroll all the way toward the far right of your spreadsheet, you can see a column called type, P-Y-P-E. And on that, you can select between title and era. So we won't be working so much with era for this workshop, but for the title slide, you just need to select title and you get this kind of effect. And to get this large text here um, in the slide that you have designated as a title slide, you just put the text in headline. Okay, so headline is all the way, uh, I think somewhere in the middle of your spreadsheet. And then next to headline, you will see the column text. And that's where you have this text kind of explaining what the timeline is about. Okay, so that's our title slide. And then now let's look at a normal slide and how we get all this information in. So toward the far left of your spreadsheet, you will see columns in red, um, that's year, month, day, time. That's the starting date of an event, right? And then next to those four columns, you also see the year, month, day, like end year, end month, end date, etc. So that's useful if you want to kind of tell your user, oh, okay, this event happened from this date to that date. So that's where you'll be putting in the information. And it's all just numbers. Omega, um, not Omega, sorry. Timeline JS will format it for you. If your event is a standalone thing, you can just leave the end year, end month, end date blank. And then next, we have this thing here. So what column do you think we will put this text in? Any guesses? Could that be a headline? Yeah, you got it. Yes, it's the headline. And then right below it, you will have the text, right? The explanatory text. Okay, and then moving on, the I think the next column will be the media. And the me, for the media, you will use the image link address. And how you get it on, um, on an image you see on the internet is you basically right click it. When you right click it, you will see these various options and then you just need to select copy image address and that's what you plonk into that column. Okay. And so far so good. Does anyone need any point of view? Okay, cool. And then next we have media credit. So media credit is essentially where you got the image from and it's this little grey column here. Um, or rather gray line of text here. So I will show you later how you can actually create a link so that when users click on this, they can be brought to the actual source. But for now, um, just know that this is where your media credit will pop up and that's the kind of information media credit is asking you for, where the image was sourced from. And finally, we have the media caption. So. This is if you want to describe what the image is. So here we have portrait by Alfred Edward Shalom. And on this slide, we see the image media type. Right? And on this slide, everything is essentially the same. It's just that in the media column, instead of an image, we have Google Maps. So that's another example. And finally, we have a video. So there are, uh, there's documentation for how you can add this media to these different kinds of media to your timeline. Um, and we'll get to that later. Yeah. And if you don't want media, that's fine. You can just leave the media column blank. And this is how 
the slide will be rendered eventually. Pretty. So there's a range of media that you can use. And um, so that's the basics of Timeline JS. You might also notice on the far right corner a column called group, right? G R O U P. So um, it's not really shown here, um, and you can play around with that function later. But what group does is that it kind of categorizes your slides. So for example, you want to talk about student life and you want to talk about institutional history. So for slides that you want to group under student life, you just type student life in that particular group segment. And then for slides that you want to group under institutional history, you group it under that. Okay, so that was a whirlwind intro to Timeline JS, but we'll get back to it later. I just wanted to um, show everyone how the template works in presenting the timeline. So do we have any questions at this point? Yeah, Andrew. Um, yeah, just a quick question about the group. Can it be any sort of keywords that you come up with? Like, it just so long as it's the same, you use the same keyword per, yes. okay. Cool. Yeah, that's right. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, if not, then let me just hop back here. Okay, so now I guess since everyone has had a taste of the timeline, people are probably raring to go <laughs> to build their own timeline. But before that, um, since this is a digital humanities workshop and I found this approach really useful, before we actually start building, let's think about the design, right? So um, what do we actually want to do with this timeline? And you might have also realized when you're looking at the Timeline.js site that um, Timeline.js is not meant to pack a hundred items into a single timeline. It's actually meant to support a narrative. So they actually suggest about 20 slides, right? And I think um, part of what makes good digital humanities practice is to think about, does this tool support what I want to do? Like, can this tool afford me um, the, to answer the questions in the way I want them to be answered? So given this, in a way, affordances of Timeline JS you should be talking about an event, it should only be about 20 slides long, we can start thinking about the research question or narrative that we want to use Timeline.js for. So in the example we saw to reverse engineer things, we are seeing the timeline answer the question, how do I present the history of women in computing, right? And for yourself, you might have similar questions that you think might be interesting to use Timeline.js to answer. For instance, how have school traditions evolved at Loyola? Um, what kinds of pets have there been at Loyola? Right, so on and so forth. So um, I'll give everyone time after I finish going through all this to kind of sketch out some design ideas for yourself. But um, this is what the first part of a digital humanities project normally is like, what's my research question? Or in the case of Timeline.js, what narrative do I want to make? And then the second step that we, um, in digital humanities projects, we are normally taught to think about is personas. So who's your audience? Who's going to use this timeline? And how are they going to use it? So if you go to the handout in the Google folder, um, I have a link in case you've never heard of personas and are a bit curious about how you design one of them. There's a link to a resource, which I find pretty useful. So um, later during the brainstorming session, you might want to think about who wants to use your site and why they want to use your site because they'll help you design and write for them. And typically the last, third, uh, not the last, the third step that we'll have is wireframing. But in this case, Timeline.js has kind of 
given you that wireframe. So there's not a lot of wireframing to do here, but it's just a good idea to know as well. Like in your timeline, do you want it to be image heavy? Do you want some videos here and there? Or do you want it to not have images at all? And then um, finally, for myself, I really like thinking about how I'm going to organize my research. So as we are thinking about events to put into our timeline, we might want to think about, okay, how do I keep track of my sources? How do I want to describe this image? Using a Google spreadsheet is good. Um, arranging information chronologically is useful because then you can just transfer things very easily into Timeline.js. And then you might also want to think about um, what kinds of metadata do you need? Right? You might need the date of the event, you will need the source of the event, uh, the source of the image. Okay, so some very general steps to help with the design process. Any questions so far? No? Okay, then let's take um, maybe five to eight minutes to plan this through. And when you're done, you can just plonk it. Um, just say I'm done in the chat. Feel free to turn off your videos if you want to turn off your videos.
question. Um, just to check in, how's everyone doing with the brainstorming process? Good. Okay, let's take another um, two minutes or so and then I will ha have maybe a few people share their ideas. Would anyone like more time? Going once, going twice. Okay, I assume everyone is good. So would anyone um, like to just type in the chat what ideas you have for using Timeline.js? No, still in the brainstorming phase. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have to be um, to, to up to 20 slides. I, I'm going to just like, um, as a minimum viable product, I'll actually propose just five slides. Like 20 slides is the upper limit. Oh yeah, that that would be nice. Like timeline JS about docs in archives. Oh yeah, Vera, what you have is great as well. I've never heard of conversation hearts candy. What are, what are those? Like candy with messages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Anna. Yeah, I, I think I need your timeline to understand this phenomenon. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, actually, that's a great idea. Yeah, that's really smart. I would like that. Like that's a fun way of figuring out what's going on. Ooh. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> I will be looking at this later during our um, building session. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it happens. That's fine. Um I remember when we first did timeline JS, we were actually supposed to do story maps JS, but I ended up doing timeline JS because I wasn't listening to instructions. So yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. 
Um, actually, Timeline JS is great for local history. As you might have found out, Timeline JS is not really that good for big global history, right? If you are trying to say something like Victorian literature, that might be too big for Timeline JS to handle. But um, something that's really focused, like local history and a certain aspect of local history, will um, allow your materials to shine. Okay. I think everyone's raring to go, so let's just, um, I'll just briefly pull up a slide to show what we can aim for in this session. Okay. Is it frozen? Okay, hang on a minute. Yeah, I think 20 slides is a suggestion, so if you want it to be longer, it can be longer. Um, in my own projects, honestly, I've done it for longer, but I guess it's just how um, how interested people will be in, in clicking through many, many slides. So they probably figured that 20 slides is the max before people start lose interest. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to reload my slides because they froze on me. Okay, well, since it's giving me the death circle of reloads, um, I'll just verbalize. You, you can see what our um, building objectives are in the handout as well. So for this um, section, I think what might be a nice goal for everyone to work toward to is to build a timeline that's, um, that has five slides. So one title slide and you have four explanatory slides. If you can go further, great. If not, that's okay. And then um, try to incorporate at least one image and one video into your timeline. And if you want to use other types of media, I'm going to show you where you can find information on that. So if you go back to the Timeline JS site, and you scroll all the way to the bottom here, right? So just below step four. And if you click on this thing called supported media types, Timeline JS will explain to you how you should be um, putting the information to media. So for instance, for online videos, you just need to take the URL for images, you need to right click and save the image address for the image to show up properly. So um, yeah, you can look at the kinds of media types you want to use. And then um, if you want to preview your timeline, this is how you can do it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, limitations are always good as well. So. Um, how you can preview the timeline is on your template, you want to copy the URL at the top, right? So the URL at the top, copy it. And then if you go to step three of the timeline JS homepage here, generate your timeline, you will want to plonk your template URL here. And once you do so, Go to step four and click preview. And then you will be able to see your timeline as you work on it. So that's very useful for allowing you to see how your image is and whether your text is getting too wordy, whether you want it a bit shorter. So this is how you can check as you are going along. Does anyone have any questions before? we spend the next 25 minutes or so building a timeline. No? Okay. All right, so I'll just stop sharing. Um, feel free to keep your videos on or off, um, depending on how you feel like it. I'll just be keeping my video on and reading about, I guess, the conversation candies. But yeah, feel free to keep it off if you want your videos off. Yeah, we have 25 minutes, so plenty of time. 
but once you are done, or if you like to like share your timeline, you can just put it in the chat.
how just checking how's everyone doing on the timelines good yeah i tried making one of my own and i was getting quite stuck so you'll see a very weird timeline <laughs> later i try to show how we can apply more but yeah let's take about um two or three more minutes and then i will bring everyone back together Um, yeah, we just um, slowly welcome people back. I don't know about you, but I find creating a timeline actually really difficult. <laughs> like just trying to plot the story. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to do something on Triple Crown winners, like to see how they are connected to the American national consciousness, but that, that didn't go too well. So how far did people get in their timelines? Did you manage to get five slides or were you more like two or three? Five slides? Nice. Four? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. I only got one. <laughs> yeah, um, and Catherine was actually proposing something really interesting. So now we have the basic structure of the timeline. We can actually add further features. But I just wanted to check with Catherine first, is that code working for you or is it still slightly wonky? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to do it. Like, just keep going. I'm, I'm just trying. Okay. Yeah. No worries. I, I think I see what to do. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I'll just um, show an example of how to create the link as Owen was saying it's actually quite um it's h it's html 
So I'll show how we can do that for the media credit portion because the source will basically be what's in the media. So what I normally do is I create the anchor tag, right? That opening arrow, A, and then I have H, R, E, F equals, and then I have that opening quotation mark, plonk in the URL, closing arrow tag, and then um, opening arrow tag, and then I have a backslash, A, and if you want to create a link within your text, you will actually use the same HTML as well. So um, if you want to try that on your own timeline, you can do that. And then you can check to see if everything is working as you had planned, which I will find out for my own timeline now. <laughs> it tells me I have no events. Oh, okay. I know why I have no events. Um, there we go. Let me see if that works. Works. Works, yay. Okay. Yeah, so that's one way in which you can expand your timeline. And yeah, it's not working on my end for some reason, but we'll move on. Another way in which you can expand it, as we were talking about earlier, is just grouping it. So if you have certain groups that you want to categorize your slides into, you can put it here. And a note about the text here, I think timeline JS is time sensitive. So if you had something that looks like this, it will actually be considered a different group. So you want to be careful when you are typing your text into this group segment. And a final point here, if you want your the background for your text to have a different color, you can actually use color codes to change the background color as well. So these are some easy ways in which you can customize your timeline. Okay, so yay, you have built a simple timeline. Well done. Um, do you have any questions about this before we go on to considering Timeline JS in general as a digital humanities project? Does, any, does anybody want to show theirs, theirs off? Yeah, does anyone want to? <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Owen. Um, I took like, I took the, it's like 12 hours that started the Revolutionary War in Lexington, Mass, um, which is like, I like, I like that you can put time in the, in the, in there, like, I, you know, it's got the hours of the day down at the bottom, which I really like, for like a really focused thing. This is really nice. Yeah, and it's a really great idea to use an image for the background as well. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Let's see, and then Eleonora. <laughs> I'm learning a lot from your timelines. <laughs> Dr. Hoppo, did you use the uh, the display date feature in there on yours? Uh, 
Um, I think I did for one. I, I, or, I find that helpful. You can put like circa, mm -hmm. you know, circa yeah, date or. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, these are really nice timelines. Yeah, but you people were fast. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, very fast. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, you can generate a thumbnail in the, the media thumbnail column. You can actually use the same URL as you use for your media. So you can use the same image address you use in media for that media thumbnail column, and then you see that small little thumbnail. Does that work? Oh, Anna, is the thumbnail working for you? Yay, okay, yeah. So um, Anna raised a really good point. If you want a thumbnail appearing in those like little gray things you see on your timeline, you can just use the same image address and put that into the media thumbnail column and it will automatically generate it for you. Okay, nice. So I'm going to um, just bring us quickly to a wrap up of the session. Okay, this is working. Right, so I have a rough kind of summary analyzing the pros and cons and then later I think we can have a discussion on what we think about Timeline JS as a digital tool. So let me just present this. Right, so one of the pros that I really like about Timeline JS is of course it's free so that makes it really easy to use in the classroom makes it easy for students to use as well and it's very visually appealing I like how the formatting is done for you so you don't need to think too hard about it that focus is really on finding information and then the wide variety of media is also great and it's easy to use and access because it uses a google spreadsheet are there any other pros that you like about timeline js from your time using it um i so i used it last semester on a project um with uh people in the textual studies class the english um 413 class mm -hmm. um and I found that it was really easy to teach people how to use it, even if they were not like super adept with like HTML or if they weren't like, you know, DH people who are used to using these tools. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like sort of offered to people like I was like, oh, you know, you can send me your entries and I can just add them. But people just ended up putting them in them themselves and it worked out pretty much fine. Um, you know, if, if people are willing to like learn HTML a little bit, just like the basics, I think it really is useful um, and, and comes out well. Yeah. And the fact that like it can take advantage of the really robust um, shared editing features of a Google spreadsheet, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you don't have to send files back and forth. I think that's really, really great. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. And also that um, a lot of people can work on one spreadsheet. Yeah, but speaking of spreadsheets, um, that's also, I think, one of the cons of it. It's dependent on Google. So sometimes when Google updates it, you kind of need to check your spreadsheet to make, that, to make sure that it's not broken. Um, and it can also be the case that some, um, no, that I'm thinking of another issue. Yeah, sorry, ignore that. But yeah, it's dependent on Google. So you want to check it every once in a while. The nice thing is that Timeline JS is pretty on top of its documentation. So whenever it notices a new change, you will update it on the site. So you can go back and look at your timeline to ensure it's working. Um, uh, another common complaint is that it's not easily customizable. I, I think one issue that my own project was having, we were trying to change the 
color of the font or the like space of the image as well. Yeah, I see Owen shaking his head. Yeah, it, that was hard to do because I think you need to either know JSON or uh, figure out how their CSS files are written. But other than those cons, I, I quite like Timeline JS as a tool. Okay, so um, the final part I have for this workshop is really more of a thinking about it as a digital humanities project kind of thing. So um, what do the categories for metadata tell us about the author's concerns? Were there some columns that you were surprised by or columns you were expecting to see but didn't see in the spreadsheet? Well, I'll start. Um, you know, I was anticipating going in, you know, the challenge of dealing with like the fixedness of like discrete times. I liked how in the description I could just write circa. I wasn't sure how that would look. It looked good. Um, but like dealing with estimates of time, approximations, ranges, um, I think is, you know, especially with dealing with historical sources, if you sort of don't know how to date that. Of course, this is kind of asking you to assign them some mm. kind of um, date category. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, because if you can't really leave the date blank. If you do, I think it just shows everything to the front of the timeline, though that might not be chronologically correct. So you are asked to put in a time for it, even if you're not sure. And I noticed too, um, like the, how you look at it, it's, it's linear, you know, it's chronological. So mm -hmm. it doesn't give you, it gives you a nice kind of visual overview, but it isn't trying to like complicate. I mean, mm -hmm. you can put categories in, but if you're trying to think about like um, time as being like cyclical or constructed or how it's experienced by different groups of people and cultures. That's like mm -hmm. a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely. And what um, Prakriti is seeing the chat that if the start date is left blank, it will break the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the slides start looking weird. Yeah, and, and uh, that's a really good point. There's a media credit, but there isn't a column for information citation. And I think that's a very important point because um, to, to me, it seems like the focus is a bit more on, oh yeah, tell us where you got your image from. But then there's not so much, um, I guess, reliability about the information. You don't really know where that info is coming from. I think it's, oh, sorry, Catherine, go ahead. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> I, I think it's pretty clear that they are imagining that this is like part of a bigger project. That, like the timeline is going to be like, you know, the default is to embed the timeline, not to like have it be its own page. Mm -hmm. um, and what, you know, when we were using it, like it, it, it can get frustrating because like you'll often want to put more in there than can fit, you know, like there, there's only, it can only fit so much text in those like timeline entries. Um, so the way that we ended up using it, and I think the way that they're imagining that you use it is that like you read something and then you like the timeline happens and then you return to the other stuff mm -hmm. or like the timeline is, is sort of a piece of a bigger puzzle. Yeah. Um, which I think makes sense. Like if you know Night Lab, like you know that they also do the maps and all like maybe they're imagining you use all of their different <laughs> things together, but um, it's not like necessarily a, a standalone thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to stop share and then, um, yeah, so we can see each other's faces while we're talking. Catherine, you had something to say? Yeah, I, I was sort of thinking about, I guess you can only use one photo. So, mm -hmm. I don't know that sometimes you know like it's interesting like what what sort of like what message like what is being represented if you have to just sort of like tie one text to one headline to one image I don't know it's sort it I feel like it can kind of be 
limiting in a in a way not mm -hmm. you know but it just sort of it's again that sort of notion that what you choose you know is maybe kind of powerful so mm -hmm. i don't know i mean you can always add more slides but yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's a very good point yeah andrew uh yeah just to kind of go off what uh, owen and Catherine were just talking about um and the limitations that it has it definitely like when i was trying to build my timeline it's kind of hard to like i like to show like the visually like display like um like movements that aren't necessarily tied to specific dates they might be tied to like a, a section of time like it was like it started this summer of, of this year but, like i'm by, by movements i'm talking about there's mm -hmm. like um, protests and stuff with um, mm -hmm. the thing i was working on and so like trying to visualize that and trying to have like an image associated with that or like text and everything and when to break that up was kind of hard to determine um but i guess also being like cognizant of the limitations and thinking about it as like not a standalone project but a supporting part of a larger project like the there was a website i was using for the information for mine and they had their own timeline that was just the chrono like chronological like listings of these things and i'm like so i was trying to go through those points and show mm -hmm. pick apart like what i could use mm -hmm. to visualize mm -hmm. but i think it could be useful for that project itself but maybe not like the standalone project yeah Definitely. It, Timeline JS really likes events to be very discreet. Like, so like what Catherine was saying, it's really one media, one image. But if you are trying to describe something like, oh, there was a lot of crime going on, but then which image do you use to represent a lot of crime going on? It, Timeline JS is not really that good for that. If I can speak in support of, of it a little bit. Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Dr. Marta Werner, um, she, when she like reviewed this project that we built, she said something that I thought was super interesting about her experience with it, which is that she felt that it was constantly disorienting and reorienting her. Um, like she felt that the way that the event, like events in this timeline were organized, like she had to constantly, she would feel disoriented and then like, the, it would, she would sort of snap back into it with different entries on the timeline. And I think that's sort of an interesting um, mm. experience. You, like you, you think of a timeline as something that's very organized and like, and near, but uh, you know, I, I think it's sort of nice to know that like, this could also be a little like chaotic. If you, if that's something you're aiming for, you know, like you can use it to convey chaos if the, like, the content calls for that. I, don't know, I think that speaks to like maybe some like flexibility and how you like mess around with the software and like <laughs> like how much like stuff you choose to force into it to create a certain experience. Can I just say something? Mm -hmm. Oh, and thank you for that. I was just thinking about how much my like what does my timeline like how because I like because I like made a timeline of them and. and I was thinking like in looking at the timeline, obviously 25 minutes, right? I was thinking and looking at the timeline, like the way in which it like didn't capture like my experience kind of. So, I mean, it's not inaccurate. It's just, I don't know. And I think that speaks to that bigger question about like, is time, I mean, like the timeline itself is saying time is important. Like the passage of time is like marking the passage of time at intervals is important. And like, I actually don't know how important that is like for the topic, you know, it, I, I think it, I think cause I have like the, <laughs> the sort of immediate like phenomenological sense of like what I was creating that when I looked at my creation, I thought, huh, this is like, what is this doing? Like, mm -hmm. not doing thing I think it's like, anyway, I, th I think it was an interesting, because I think um, as an academic, it's easy to sort of study that other thing over there and, you know, to just like analyze it from like my position and its position over here. But it's interesting to sort of, I don't know. It was, it's a, it's a really, yeah. Because it's, it's an interpretation. 
that yeah. you're making. you know when you're selecting the one image it's like a it's an editorial you know it's it's almost like an addition it's like an addition of a of a timeline it's going to be yeah the I, creator's uh you know lens I and, think also like the visual nature of it I was like looking for cute photos of Emmett but then like it wasn't like, but then I think that the the constraints of my expectations of the sort of like media aesthetics were creating issues with like the, you know, like the, the actual intervals and like what I said about things. So there were all of these kind of considerations that I was very like, I was struggling with like how constraining the selection of images was. Um, and I think that also, and I also felt like I wanted to be more, I wanted to have the rules be more regular and I didn't have the data for that. Mm. So it was, yeah, it was. And to be fair, all photos of Emmett are cute photos. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> I mean, we don't all take good photos all the time, <laughs> but I think it was a really interesting exercise. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, actually, I, I know we are at the um, 1.5 hour mark, but Catherine, I'm curious, what would a perfect timeline look like to you to represent the story that you hope to tell with Timeline JS? <laughs> okay. I, like, I think that, I like the things that I wanted to communicate, this wasn't the format for it. Like I wanted to communicate how tired I was. <laughs> I don't know. It was like how I was thinking about the experience. Mm -hmm. you know, I think how I was thinking about the experience and sort of recalling like my thoughts and like, and like, you know, sort of reflection on it. Mm -hmm. was not like, this was not the format to really capture that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a, you yeah. could have been images of you. Well, there are no images of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, like I'm, I'm sort of like, you know, I think the fact that it's so like that we're kind of drawn to the images is like, yeah. you know, it's a, it is interesting. Yeah, it it is a extremely visual medium, like you you know in a way that it's not supposed to be an Instagram feed kind of thing, but I think when you see something with an image and when, it's, when it looks so nice your eyes are just drawn to the image first before you start reading the text so like um what owen and what um Catherine, i think you were saying also or was it uh, dr hopwood like it timeline just really is meant to be more part of a bigger project it feels like than just a standalone thing because as a standalone thing it doesn't convey as much as one would really like it to yeah, so um, I guess to wrap, being mindful of everyone's time to wrap up, does anyone have any last thoughts about Timeline JS? This was great. It was nice to kind of be immersed in it for this concentrated space and time. <laughs> so this is great. Yeah, thanks for coming, everyone. That's all I have. I have um, two more questions up on the slides that you can think about in your spare time when you're brushing your teeth, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, if not, I hope um, you at least had some fun trying to look at nice images to put on the timeline. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, everyone. This was really well done, and it was actually really fun to be able to try it and then think about it. And it feels like I really got a lot out of this. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. You're off to my next. <laughs> <laughs>